Hello and welcome to this review of my IBM Model M2. There were roughly three generations of IBM Buckling Springs keyboards, starting with the venerable Model F, then came the famous Model M, and this is the third and last entry in the series, the M2. After this, IBM decided it was no longer economical to produce mechanical keyboards, and they started making rubber domes instead, for instance, like... Uh, this keyboard that I've got here, which is a fairly typical example. Now, with every new generation, the quality dropped dramatically due to cost cutting. For instance, the original Model F, adjusted for inflation, cost about $900, which is more than a whole computer cost nowadays. Well, at the time, computers were extremely expensive and the keyboard was just a fraction of that, so IBM could afford to shell out for a nice, high-quality keyboard. However, as competitors hit the market and computer prices dropped, they had to cut corners, leading to the Model M, which was still very good, but half as expensive and with only a quarter of the expected lifetime. And finally, they arrived at this, their last-ditch attempt to make a buckling springs design. Now, some things IBM obviously tried to keep at any cost. It still has buckling springs, for instance, and the keycaps are still fairly thick PBT with nice die sublimed legends. Um, they're not quite as thick as the ones from the Model M, and the M2 keycaps only come in a single part variant, whereas old Model Ms usually come with this clip-on design, which is pretty nice. Uh, but overall, these are still very good keycaps. Everything else, however, was done as cheaply as possible. The case is very thin, and there's no separate barrel plate. Instead, the barrels are integrated into the front case. You might be able to make that out from here. And there's quite a lot of twist in the case. I'm going to attempt to demonstrate that by pegging down this end of the keyboard with my elbow, like so, and then twisting the case. And as you can see, there is a huge amount of twist in the keyboard, and that's pretty worrying. There's also no metal plates in the keyboard anywhere, so it's much lighter than the quite heavy Model M, and the whole thing feels quite flimsy, actually. The electronics are also dirt cheap and badly done. In fact, it is notoriously unreliable and prone to failure, usually due to faulty capacitors. Um, I actually got two of these at the same time, both for 50p from a recycling centre nearby, and one of the two was completely dead, and the other one, this one, wasn't working very well. I'm recording this part of the review before I clean it because I want to show what can go wrong with these boards. Um, and due to a fault in either the membrane or the electronics, some of the keys don't work properly. Specifically, the E and C keys barely ever register, and a whole bunch of other keys are teamed up, which means that if you press one, it will always also trigger another. And I've got a keyboard testing utility here that will show that. So for instance, if I press left, it always also triggers pause. And if I press down, it triggers num lock, and right triggers divide. V and B are teamed up, as are N and M. And most annoyingly, space and enter trigger each other, which is very annoying because every time you try to space two words, you also put in a new line. And to demonstrate how bad that is, I've typed the quick brown fox jumps over the lazy old dog. And as you can see, that didn't turn out particularly well. Furthermore, the teamed up keys are blocked by the two key rollover, so if you hold shift and either V, B, N or M, it doesn't register. Um, so if you try to type IBM model M2, instead it comes out as IODL2. Not very effective there. Now, because both this one and the other one were missing one foot, and some of the springs on this one were kind of bad and corroded, I disassembled the faulty one and used its parts to restore this one. Um, I cleaned up the membranes with some IPA. Um, there was a lot of black stuff on some of the membrane traces, um, and it works fine now, so it seems to have been something with the membrane. The key feel on this keyboard is different from that on the Model M, and in fact, they use different springs. Uh, I would say these don't feel as uniform, and they possibly feel slightly heavier. Um, I'd say they're not as nice to type on for sure, and gaming got me uh, 
cramped hand very quickly while I was playing some games that require a lot of finger work, especially with the space bar. Uh, the sound is a little bit different too. This one is much more pingy than the Model M. In fact, it sounds a little bit more like the Model F. Um, by comparison, the Model M has a fuller, chunkier sound with a quieter and slightly higher pitched ping. I'll demonstrate that to you quickly. So this is what the M2 sounds like. And this is what the Model M sounds like. As you can see from the model sticker, this one was made in 1995 in the UK. It has a very thin and flimsy cable, and it's very poorly retained by that thing in the corner. Also, the feet are a little bit like a miniature version of those on the Model M, but they're quite fragile. They come off easily, and um, they they don't really grip all that well. So if you put the keyboard on your desktop, it can glide around quite a lot. In the end, it's a shame to see the Model M come to this. Yes, it's still buckling springs and it still has nice keycaps, but it doesn't feel the same. And it's so prone to failure. In fact, it doesn't even look as impressive. I mean, if you compare it to a Model M, let's just get one of my Model Ms here and put it below it. I mean, the Model M just looks so much more impressive. So yeah, given the choice, I'd always go for one of the older generation models uh, rather than this uh, flimsy M2. Anyway, that's my review. And here is a typing demonstration of me typing on the M2.